Welcome back! My name is Jadwiga and I am a librarian at the Sterling Heights Public Library. In this episode of First Rate Reads, we are not going to focus just only on one genre. Also, it is not going to be only me recommending to you some good titles. A few of my colleagues will join me and talk about some good reading suggestions. Just a reminder, all titles that we are going to talk about are currently available in our digital collection. And once we are back in the library, you can also get them in printed versions. My first recommendation for today belongs to historical fiction genre. Next Year in Havana by Chanel Clayton. The main character, Marisol, grew up in Florida. Her grandmother and her grandmother's family had to fled Cuba after the revolution. After Eliza's death, Marisol goes to Cuba to fulfill her grandmother's last wish and scatter her ashes um, on the island. After arriving in Cuba, Marisol will have to verify her knowledge about the island. The narration jumps between Marisol's story and her uh, arrival in the Cuba and historical events of 1958 and Cuban Revolution and Marisol's grandmother's story. If you like characters from this book, you can grab another book by the same author, When We Left Cuba. The main character of this book is Beatrice, Marisol's aunt, that is also featured in Next Year in Havana. My next recommendation belongs to Southern fiction. Songbirds and Stray Dogs by Megan Lucas. The main character, 21 years old Jolene, is raised by her aunt and for the whole life she tries to prove herself to her. When she gets unintentionally pregnant, she finds herself abandoned again. Escaping her past, she moves to a new place and tries to be build a new life. It is an outstanding story about the strength of the human spirit. It talks about challenges of everyday life, motherhood, trauma, about family, not only the one that we are born to, but also the one that we are making during our life. Now I would like to invite you to a little talk with some of my colleagues from the library. Debbie, Barb, Krista, Brenda, Stephanie, and Brent. Thank you all for joining me and recommending some of good reads. Would you like to start, Debbie? Uh, but I'm going to uh, recommend three books uh, today. And the one book is called The Wonder by Emma Donahue. Then I'm going to talk about one called Can't We Talk About Something More Pleasant by Roz Chast. And the last one is Can't Wait to Get to Heaven by Fanny Flagg. These are all books that I've read years ago or within the last 10 years. And I really enjoyed them. And they're things that really stuck with me. So I thought that, that you might like to give them a try if, if they haven't gone by your uh, notice yet. Uh, the first one, The Wonder by Emma Donahue, um, was written in 2016. Emma Donahue is an Irish author. She lives in Canada now, but she was born in Ireland, so she has a lot of background with that. Uh, this book is about an English nurse who trained under Florence Nightingale. The story is set in 1859. And she and a nun are hired to go to this small Irish village to watch over an 11-year-old girl. This girl supposedly hasn't eaten anything in four months. So she with her medical background and then the nun with her religious background are hired to try to figure out what's going on with this situation. The nun is, you know, believes that maybe she's got some sort of mystical religious thing going on and that she could be a saint and that's what the village is leaning toward and they want to believe that because it would make their village famous. The nurse 
thinks that it's a scam somehow. And she's hired to, to be with them for two weeks and she is becomes attached to this little girl and she just they they watch her twenty four hours a day trying to figure out how she's able to survive this time without eating. As a little bit of time goes by, the girl's health does start to deteriorate. And so the woman, the nurse feels pressured to try to figure this out to save to save the life of this little girl. It's a really interesting story. It has a lot of good history on the, the Catholic uh, experience and uh, folklore in Ireland at that time, uh, religious and economic situations. It's based on true stories. Uh, Emma Donahue often writes about true story situations where she finds newspaper articles and then expands upon them. It's a short book. It's a quick read. Emma Donahue also wrote The Room, which is really famous. Uh, it was made a movie out of too. Um, then the next book I'm going to talk about is Can't We Talk About Something More Pleasant, which was written in 2014 by Roz Chast. Roz Chast is a cartoonist who works, whose work has appeared in the New Yorker magazine, the little cartoons that they have scattered in there. Um, this is a memoir of the author's experiences dealing with her parents' final years. It's a true story about her own life. Um, it's written as a graphic novel, so it's not going to be text. It's uh, like cartoon kind of thing with thought bubbles and everything, but they're, they're cute little drawings. It's, you know, something that most people can relate to um, as you get older that, you know, your parents maybe do or don't accept what their own situation is and then dealing with the siblings and how they want to handle things. And it was really funny, but bittersweet, of course. Um, it was really, it was a quick read because of it being a graphic novel, the wonderful book. So I highly recommend that. Next one I was going to talk about is Can't Wait to Get to Heaven by Fanny Flagg. Fanny Flagg is a, a Southern um, woman who is an actress and was really well known for being on the panel of the original Match Game from back when on TV. She's written another of, of other uh, well-known books, uh, Fried Green Tomatoes at the Whistle Stop Cafe. Most of her books are very funny, heartwarming, upbeat, Southern kind of stories. If you want to be cheered up, those are, are good books to, to try. This one is about this 80-year-old woman called Mrs. Shimfistle, which her name alone is funny. Um, she falls out of a fig tree in her yard and then she dies. And then it's the, her experiences in what her version of heaven is. You know, everybody probably has their own little version of what they expect heaven to be and, and what's going to be good for them. And this is what she, her experiences are, are what things that make her happy. Then some things happen after that too. And she has to deal with her, her family's understanding of these events. And it's it's a, a really funny, enjoyable story. She's used these same characters in another book called Standing in the Rainbow. Standing in the Rainbow came first, but you don't need to read that one first to appreciate this one. If you like books by Dorothea Benton or Lee Smith, you'd probably like Fanny Flagg too. So those are the books I recommend today. I hope you enjoy them. Thank you. Those are great recommendations. And now let's see what will recommend to us Brent. Uh, I've got two here to recommend today, and they couldn't possibly be more different. First one is going to be a fantasy uh, called The Name of the Wind by a guy named Patrick Rothfuss. It's the first book in the King Thriller Chronicle, which uh, I think is probably someday going to be three books, but right now it's only two. Don't know how long it's going to be before book three comes out. It's, this follows a uh, character by the name of Quoth, who is basically this legendary, um, you know, bard, mage, uh, assassin who has done great and terrible deeds over the course of uh, a long lifetime and has faked his own death in order to go into um, retirement uh, in the middle of nowhere. Well, he gets found out and spotted, and a uh, guy basically, you know, wants his, his life story and he winds up telling him. Well, the first book pretty much recounts the early part of his life. I'm not going to go into too much detail on, on you know, all that. Uh, don't want to give too much of it away, but um, it's intricately plotted, richly detailed. You've got a lot of really interesting characters with sensible and relatable motivations. If you like the intricacy and, you know, the complexity of something like Game of Thrones or something like that, 
this is probably a, a, a good bet for you. And it is recounting the earlier part of his life, and, and a portion of that is going to be spent in a in like school setting as well. You know, you can compare it to Harry Potter, too. Uh, it's definitely not, uh, you know, aimed at a, a real young audience, but it's not as R-rated as, as like the Game of Thrones or something. If that sounds interesting to you, I would say give it a try. Uh, I really enjoyed it. I uh, read this one fairly recently. It's not a real new book. It's been around for a little while, but um, one of the better ones I've, I've read in quite a while. Next one I've got for you is The Cold Dish by Craig Johnson. Uh, this is the first book in the Walt Longmire series. This is a long-running series. It's been around for a good long time. Uh, it's also been turned into to a Netflix uh, series, so if you may have encountered uh, Longmire on Netflix, um, this is this is the book series that it's based off of. Uh, so this is going to be basically a modern Western murder mystery. Uh, you got a sheriff of a fictional county in central Wyoming who winds up with uh, kind of an unusual case. His body that turns up that is uh, actually not a, not a real um, sympathetic victim. Uh, this is a guy who was involved in uh, the gang rape of a uh, uh, young Native American uh, girl who got away with it, basically. Revenge is obviously a major uh, factor in this. If you're looking for something with complex and interesting characters, a uh, nice plot, a really great sense of place, uh, this, this really gives you a, a kind of a feel for what, you know, the, the modern West is like. Um, Walt's not really a cowboy, but, you know, he's, he's got a lot of the same types of uh, characteristics that one might find in a, in a classic Western. You know, he's, he's the, the sheriff of this place. He's an aging Vietnam vet. Um, not the happiest guy on the planet, but determined to do a job and do it well. Um, so he's an interesting guy. Uh, and some of the other characters that, you know, work with him uh, through this are, they're, they're a lot of fun. It's got some touches of humor and just a hint of the supernatural works its way in there in a couple places too, in a way that's actually pretty believable. If you like uh, CJ Box, the Joe Pickett series by CJ Box, I would definitely say give Craig Johnson a try. Um, and if you like it, it's a well-established series that's been going for a while. That's what I got for you. All right. Thank you, Brent. For those who really like science fiction, I know Krista um, has few recommendations for that. Yes. So the first thing I'd like to recommend is The Murder Bat Diaries by Martha Wells. It is a series which is narrated first person by Murderbot, who is a sec unit or a cyborg. He's half clone, half robot, and his behavior is dictated by a governor module or software that's loaded into his robot parts. He is rented out to survey teams who want to go to uninhabited planets and survey the planets, and so for security and insurance reasons, they must take these sec units with them. On one mission, SEC unit's governor module malfunctioned and he murdered uh, more than 50 of the people he was supposed to protect. So to stop it from doing it again, he's hacked his software. So he is now a free-willed, free agent, essentially, and nobody knows. He goes through the motions that he is still under the control of this governor module. Kind of as a self-punishment, he calls himself Murderbot because he has killed these people. And even though it wasn't his fault, he still feels responsible. So on his newest mission, he wants nothing more than to just do the bare minimum to, to protect the survey team that he's now licensed to and to go back to his cubicle and watch soap operas because now he's learning what it's like to be human and he enjoys entertainment of all types. Well, during this mission on this new planet, it becomes obvious that his survey team, his humans are being sabotaged and he has to help them find out who is sabotaging them and why. I love this series because Murderbot is hilarious. He is learning what it's like to be human. He wants no interaction with human beings whatsoever. He, prefer, he prefers to be alone watching his soap operas, not being even recognized as a human being. But through the series, 
he does learn what it's like to be human and he starts to actually think of these human beings as more friends than associates. This is a series of four novellas. They're about 160 pages each. Um, and the fifth novel, which uh, just came out, is actually a full-length novel, so I'm looking forward to that. And a sixth installment is coming next year, so if you love Murderbot as much as I do, you have plenty to read and look forward to. second series I wanted to recommend is military science fiction as well, and it's the Admiral series by Sean Danker. He actually calls it the Evagardian series. Um, it's a series of four novels. The first one is Admiral. This one is mystery as well as horror and science fiction all mixed up. Again, it's first person. Um, we meet the Admiral when he wakes up out of um, a malfunctioning sleeper tube. Him and three of his recruits are on a dead ship on a strange planet and they need to figure out why. It's also first person point of view. So we're um, coming at the events from the Admiral's point of view. And it, it's very obvious that he's not an Admiral. And why is he in this Admiral sleeper tube? So there's this mystery. Some of the, the group that he's stranded with don't trust him because they know he's not an admiral. Uh, others recognize him, but we don't know really where they recognize him from. So this one also has a lot of humor that I enjoy. So I really recommend that series as well. And then the third book I wanted to recommend today is not part of a series. It's a standalone. We're kind of switching gears here. This is a murder mystery. It's also historical fiction. Um, it does have some fantastical elements, so it's not straight realistic fiction. And it's The Seven and a Half Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle by Stuart Turton. So I went into this book knowing nothing about it. My 14-year-old daughter recommended it to me. She said I just had to read it. And so I picked it up and started reading. It feels a lot like Downton Abbey, the time period, where there's a manor house, there's a lord and a lady, there's their servants, there's guests. And really, we are... We just enter this world with a man in a forest who wakes up and has no memories. He doesn't know who he is, where he is, or why. All he knows is he's just yelled the word Anna. So as he's in this fog of coming awake, he hears what he thinks is a murder occur in the forest. So as he stumbles back to the manor house, he is trying to figure out who he is. And he learns this. He learns that he's with a group of guests that have all been called together for a party to welcome Evelyn Hardcastle home from Paris, where she was sent after the murder of her brother 19 years ago to the day. Now, everybody in this house has nothing in common other than they're, they've been called back. They were all there when Thomas was murdered 19 years ago. He's told he has to solve a murder, but as you read through this book, you know that everything changes. The narrator, even though you stick with the same narrator, he's not who you think he is ever. The events that are narrated over the course of the day, they're never the same. And what murder he's trying to solve also changes. So that was an excellent book I highly recommend. All right, thank you, Krista. Those are great recommendations. For a lot of people who like book series, I think Brenda will have some great recommendations. I would like to share a few historical mystery books that I've enjoyed reading. The first is titled A Girl Like You by Michelle Cox. It is the first in a series of five books Um, it is set in 1930s Chicago and features a young girl named Henrietta who is trying to provide for her family during the Great Depression. Her father has committed suicide and left her mother with um, Henrietta and a bunch of little siblings. She finds a job working at a local dance hall. This was something I, I, I learned in the book that um, they had these dance halls where girls worked and men would come and pay to have a dance with, with them. And so she, this is pretty good money for her, and she's been doing this, but keeping it quiet from her family. And while she's working there, her boss, the floor matron, is found murdered. And an inspector, his name is um, Clive Howard, he comes to investigate the murder, and he ropes Henrietta into going undercover to um, kind of delve into the seedy underworld of Chicago at that time to help solve this murder of um, the floor matron. It's a very light read. It has um, a touch of romance to it, the inspector and Henrietta. Um, what I liked most about it was just the depiction of um, depression era in Chicago and the historical details and um, just what life might have been like for a young girl at that time trying to make her way. 
The next series I would like to recommend is A Monogram Murders by Sophie Hanna. It is the first book in the new Hercule Perot series. Um, there are currently three titles in the series and a fourth one is going to be released um, tentatively this September. She was given the approval um, to continue these stories by Agatha Christie's estate. And in this one, um, Perot is trying to solve the case of there are three bodies that have been found in this hotel, the same hotel, and they each have a monogrammed cufflink in their mouth. So he's trying to crack this case. It's kind of complex and, and detailed, the plot. Um, I enjoyed it very much and read the second one and plan on reading the rest. I thought she did a good job and I really enjoyed this complex mystery. And then the final title I would like to recommend is The Inspector and Mrs. Jeffries. It is by Emily Brightwell and it is the first book in the Mrs. Jeffries series and was published in 1993. And since then she has written 38 more books with the new one coming out in uh, 2021. It, this is set in Victorian England, and basically it's the story of um, a police inspector from Scotland Yard, but he's kind of bumbling and um, just not the greatest inspector. He's a nice guy, but just not real good at asking questions and getting involved in people's business. So his staff, including Mrs. Jeffries, who's the housekeeper, they work kind of behind the scenes and behind his back to help him solve these mysteries without him figuring out that that is what they are doing. And in this one, there was um, a, a doctor that is found dead. He's been poisoned, and they're trying to uh, figure out who poisoned the doctor. I, I like these. They're, it's a nice, cozy mystery series. It has a touch of humor. The staff is kind of, they're funny and cute. It's just very light. I think it's a nice, light read for when you need a break, break from some more serious reading. And that's all. Thank you, Brenda. All right, let's go to Stephanie. What did you prepare for us today? Hi everyone. So I prepared two books today. Uh, these were both books that we read through, through uh, Books on Tap that were rated pretty high, so I thought they'd be great to share even though they are older. First book I have for you is The Night Circus by Erin Morgenstern. Uh, this is a New York Times bestseller. And this book is based, uh, like the title says, it's a circus and it appears all around the country with literally no warning. And it just simply pops up and it moves from place to place. And behind the scenes, there's a competition between two young adults and they've been trained since they were little kids. Uh, one from a mentor who just randomly found uh, the boy as an orphan and another through uh, her father. Unbeknownst to them, uh, this is a game in which only one of them can be left standing. So of course they obviously fall in love and this sets off a domino effect of consequences, not only for them, for the other participants in the circus, as well as the audience. It is beautifully written. It has lots of characters with lots of twists and turns and it definitely leaves you wanting a sequel. Uh, the next one is The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo by, by Taylor Reed. And so this one is about a movie icon uh, Evelyn Hugo, and she finally decides to tell a her story, like her life story. And as you can guess by the title, is she's been married seven times, and she leaves nothing to be um, hidden uh, in this in this novel that's going to be written. She picks an unknown magazine reporter, which was kind of interesting because she shows up and she believes that she's actually writing a report on Evelyn's decision to auction off all these dresses that she has for a breast cancer charity. And then soon finds out she's writing the one and only biography um, for her. If you like Elizabeth Taylor, uh, her life story, or even Marilyn Monroe's life story, uh, you'll find out that this book is definitely one you wanna read as it, we felt like it really, pulled from all of um, their life aspects. I really feel like with the book, you can laugh, you can cry, you could just generally be happy reading it. And it's an easy book uh, to read and just keeps you turning the pages. So those are the two I have for you. Thank you. And let's hear what, what suggestion does uh, Barb for 
have for us? Uh, there are a couple of books that I wanted to talk about today. Uh, they are both by one of my favorite authors. His name is Christopher Moore, and his books are for people who have just like a goofy, irreverent sense of humor. Uh, well, let's just say if you're offended by things, uh, this is probably not the books for you. Uh, the first book that I want to talk about is called uh, The Stupidest Angel. Uh, this is a story, it takes place at, at Christmas time, and it starts out very beautifully. An angel is sent to earth to grant a child a wish. Very, very beautiful that uh, this small child is going to get a wish. Well, uh, tragedy has happened to this little boy. He lives in a place called Pine Cove, California, and he witnesses Santa Claus being murdered at Christmas time. A few days before Christmas, Santa Claus is murdered. Well, okay, it wasn't really Santa Claus that was murdered. It was one of the local people that lived in the area, but he happened to be the Santa Claus for like some local club. Uh, so he was in a Santa suit and uh, he was actually trying to murder his ex-wife at the time. So in self-defense, she whacked him with a shovel and she killed him. Well, this little boy didn't know that, but across the way he sees Santa Claus being murdered. So, you know, he's very upset. So enter uh, Angel Raziel, who comes down and he is going to grant this child a wish. Well, uh, the little boy Joshua, he knows that Christmas is going to like totally be ruined if Santa is dead. So he takes the angel where Santa is in a graveyard, but he's not exactly sure where Santa is buried. Uh, and the angel, just to, you know, speed things up and everything, uh, he decides just, you know, instead of just raising Santa, you know, he's just going to bring them all back to life, you know, because that just makes it easy, right? So we know that when dead people come back to life, dead people are now zombies when they come back to life. Uh, so the story is not just about zombies. It uh, has all these other wonderful Christmas uh, elements and other Christmas stories it gives nods to. Everything's all kind of related in. Uh, it's just a very, very goofy story, not just for Christmas. It's good for any time. If you like zombies, then this is your kind of humor. Other book that I'd like to mention by him is a story called Blood Sucking Fiends, and it is book one of a trilogy. The main character, Jody, she's turned into a vampire in that story. And I don't know about you, but I always, I always thought it would be great to be a vampire because, you know, you live forever and you have so much time to read all of those books because you're going to live forever. How great is that? But the thing is, when you're going to live forever and when you're bit by a vampire, nothing about you changes. So it's great because you can eat and drink whatever you want. You're not going to gain any weight. But as luck would have it, she was overweight when the vampire bit her, so no matter what she does, she's never going to lose her saddlebags. Uh, and she also struggles with things like she needs her coffee in the morning, she's not hot on having this blood diet all the time, uh, blood is not her thing, she needs her caffeine, so she has to figure out uh, how to live her day-to-day -day life, uh, you know, she can't look in the mirror to see how her makeup looks, uh, you know, there's just a lot of issues with being a vampire that you don't realize going into it. Uh, so both of these stories take place in California. A lot of Christopher Moore's characters, uh, the Angel Raziel, he's actually featured in a couple of his other stories. Hold the book up. Uh, he's featured also in one of the Blood Sucking Fiends. He's in one of those books in the trilogy. And any of his other books, uh, Christopher Moore's books, you'll see that they take place around the same towns. And some of the characters in one book, you'll see that they hop over to the other books as well. I recommend all of his books. They're just very silly, silly, goofy things to read. And that's what I have to say about my books. Thank you so much. Once again, um, thank you for joining me today and for sharing your suggestions. Once again, a big thank you to my colleagues for joining me today and sharing those great suggestions. And thank you for watching this video. Feel free to leave comments with book titles that you are currently reading and you can find more videos produced by our library staff on our Facebook page or SHTV1 YouTube channel. Take care.